for number 18, um, we have these lines here. Y is equal to X, Y is equal to zero, um, X is equal to two, and X is equal to four. Let me just highlight this. So we can see that the area um, formed between them is this section here, this trapezoidal section. And what we want to do is um, we want to revolve this line, this area rather, um, about the line X is equal to one. So about this line here, X is equal to one. Um, we want to revolve it right, right like so. Uh, okay, so when we revolve this, what is actually going to happen is we are going to have these um, these disks, right, that go like so. They, on the outer part, they touch the blue curve, and then on the inner part, they touch the closest curve, which at some point is going to be this orange line, and then after up here, it changes, right? Um, but the, the blue curve, it never changes. So we're summing up all these rings um, across the y-axis. We're stacking them one on top of the other uh, in the way that if we stack coins, it gives us a volume, right? That's how we create a volume of revolution. Um, so what we have to do here is actually we, we're, we are going to break this down into two integrals because um, the first integral is the outer radius touches the blue line and the inner radius touches the orange. And then the second integral begins here where the outer radius is still the blue, but the inner radius now is the pink. Um, so for the integral number one, we are going to integrate it across the y axis, right? So... Um, and we're going to integrate here, beginning at y equals 0, that's our first boundary, and we are going to um, end it at this point here, so where um, x is equal to, where this line intersects x is equal to 2, right? Um, so at this point we have the x is equal to 2, and therefore y is equal to 2 as well. So we're going to go from 0 to 2, right? And what we have to do here is we we have to think about our disk. So when we have our disk, uh, the way that we calculate it is we're actually, it's like we're going to have this, this disk here with the bigger radius, right? And then from it, we're going to remove the, the disk with the, sorry, the circle with the smallest radius. So that way we're left with just this, um, with just this ring shape thing. So this shape, is taken by uh, getting um, R1, the, the outer ring, and then subtracting from it uh, R2, right? So we have to get an expression for A1 and A2. Um, so we have here that, let's see, um, A1, well, A1 is the, um, is the distance between the, the radius goes from X is equal to four, all the way here to x is equal to 1, right? So we can clearly see here that this radius here has a length of 3 going from 1 to 4, and it doesn't change because this line is constant the whole time. So a1 is just pi r squared, so pi 3 squared. Um, and a2, a2 is also fixed, right? Because this line here, it doesn't change. It's just that x is equal to 2. So at all points uh, from down here to up here, we can see that the radius will always be constant, right? Um, the, at the smallest part, it will be from it goes from one to two, so this distance here is just one, so pi times one squared, right? So therefore, we have a one minus a two is equal to um, pi, and that's nine minus one, so eight pi, right? So this integral is just the integral of eight pi, and then dy because we're adding it across the y-axis like we're stacking it vertically um, so we have we have taken the expression for the first integral now let's think about the second integral well the second integral begins at 2 and it ends at this point here where the line y is equal to x intersects with x is equal to 4 so at this point x is equal to 4 and therefore um, y is also equal to 4 and then we do have to um, now form our A1 and our A2 because this whole this whole ring here, um, and I should put this, this here is A1 minus A2, this ring. So um, for A1, we're still going to have our radius 
the same as it was previously, right? Because our radius is still going to go from uh, x is equal to 1 all the way to x is equal to 4. This here does not change. Um, so thankfully, that's a nice, nice calculation for us. So once more, it's just pi times 3 squared. But what about a2? So um, a2 is actually a different situation because we, when, say, we get here, right? Um, so our radius is going to be this length. Now, think about this length. What is this length? Well, this length is just the, the length of the height of the curve, right? Which is this whole thing. It's the height of the curve minus 1. Uh, because it's like we've raised the, the y-axis. We've walked it up 1, right? So that distance is always going to be the distance to the curve y is equal to x. But then we're going to subtract 1 from it. So actually, this is just pi. Um, and because we're integrating with respect to y, we're going to use y. So this is just the line y minus 1 squared. So if we do a1 minus a2 is equal to um, 9, I'm going to put pi. This is 9 minus, uh, let's foil this out, so minus, let's see, y squared, so y minus y squared. And then this is minus 2y, so minus minus 2y is plus 2y. And then um, plus 1, so minus 1, yeah. So all I did was I foiled a2, and then I subtracted a2 from a1. Um, therefore, we have a1 minus a2 is equal to pi, and then this is minus y squared plus 2y, and then 9 minus 1 plus 8. So now we have our expression, um, minus y squared plus 2y plus 8 um, dy, and then we are ready to integrate. So the first integral, um, 8 pi is a constant, right? So we, we're just integrating dy. Therefore, this is 8 pi y from 0 to 2. And then plus, let's see, this is um, minus y cubed over 3 plus y squared, because that's y squared over 2 times 2, and then plus 8y from 2 to 4. So let's evaluate these boundaries. Um, now, this one's just going to be 8 pi, right? When we Sorry, uh, 8 pi times 2, so 16 pi. When we plug in the lower boundary, it's going to disappear, so that's just 16 pi. And then plus, let's see, um, minus 64 over 3, because that's 4 cubed, and then plus, uh, plus 16. Oops, and I, there's actually going to be a pi here. Plus 16, um, and then plus, uh, plus 8 times 4, which is 32. And then minus, 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 so plus 2 cubed over 3, so plus 8 thirds. And then um, minus, minus 4, and then minus 8 times 2, uh, that is minus 16. Yeah, and all this times pi. So actually, when we expand this, right, we're going to have, um, let's see, uh, 16 pi plus minus 64 thirds plus 8 thirds is uh, minus 64 plus 8. That is minus 56 over 3, minus 56 over 3. And then we have, let's see, 16 plus 32 minus 4 uh, minus 16. This gives us plus... 28 pi, uh, 28 times pi. So when we simplify this out, we expand the pi and we add these. Um, that is 28 plus 16 um, minus 56 divided by 3. So this should give us, let's see, 76 pi over 3 cubic units. So let me just double check my math. So there's 16 plus 28 minus 56 thirds. And yeah, that gives us 70, um, let's see, that gives us, yeah, that is correct, 76 pi over 3, and that is our volume when we um, revolve this whole area about the line x is equal to 1.